Hi everyone, I'm Ollie. I'm Lucy's boyfriend for those who are new to the channel and I'm just doing a video on what it's like to go out with someone who is blind. Today Lucy and I thought it might be great if I come on the channel and answer a few of your questions on what it's like to be blind. Well, to go out with someone who is blind. Uh, it might help some of you who are going through blindness, partners who are going through a similar situation themselves with their partner going blind, or just for if you want just generally to know. He just nosy, really. Right, off. <laughs> they might be nosy, I don't know. So, what's the first question, Lou? Where did you meet me? Uh, Lucy and I met at a drama club. Uh, in Am Dram? Uh, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> in um, Birmingham. You were great at acting, weren't you all? Uh, enthusiastic. <laughs> so, all the parts you played in about your white trainers. About my white trainers? <laughs> It would be embarrassing. I don't know if that's safe for the internet, really. <laughs> they were too blinding. They're, Pardon the pun. <laughs> they were incredibly white night trainers that were maybe a little holy after a while. And the parts you played? Uh, the parts I played, I played this guy, oh, what was he called? Gavin? I think it was Gavin. <laughs> I don't know, but you did a Scottish accent. I know, that, that was, was Callum in ever. our house. Yeah. Oh, man, that's bad. <laughs> you plaid trousers. Oh, dear. <laughs> this isn't the important stuff. No, Let's get sorry. on to what it's like to actually go out with someone who's blind. Funniest memory. They've got it. They've got to know a bit of a backstory. What was amusing was um, when we met Zoella, and just as we, well, she was just about to come and give Lucy a hug. Olga, she farted. Yeah, it was. And it, was it was a really hot day, so Olga was a bit ill. Year. And yeah. oh my god, it stank. I was like, oh my gosh, I hope she doesn't think it's me. It was, it was, it was bad. And Ollie wasn't even sitting next to me. So no, I was across the table and it was like, like there was no way to blame it on anyone else <laughs> apart from either Olga or Lucy. <laughs> so let's, let's hope dog. it was the dog she yeah. painted. She didn't mention it. Yeah, that's pretty good to be fair. <laughs> When did, Lucy go blind? when did I go blind? So Lucy went blind at the age of 17. So we'd been together two months. I was 16 at the time. Um, we were just in her room at the time, actually, when we first sort of noticed it. She was, we had like these fairy lights all around the room because Lou wasn't her, her fairy lights. Like Still am. Yeah, to be fair, she still is. <laughs> and she suddenly started like noticing that my hands were glowing and she was like, Ollie, your, your hands, they're glowing. And I was like, what? And then we like immediately like sort of rushed downstairs and we were like, uh, Lou, Lou says her, my hands are glowing. What, what's going on? Mm -hmm. And you went down to Moorfields for an eye appointment mm -hmm. at that point. It was crazy because as, as a 16 year old, like how do you cope with that when your girlfriend says you're going blind? It, it, it's difficult. It's like Lucy sort of warned me when we first got well, when we first started talking that it could like this condition of hers, incontinentia pigmenti, could lead to blindness in the future and that she's already lost sight in one eye. I remember because we were talking about uh 3D glasses and going to see 3D films and things and she mentioned it. It was like in our second chat or something. I slipped it in, didn't I? I wanted yeah, to be cash. It, it was such a and I was just like <laughs> Oh yeah, like well, hopefully it never happens, but I'm like I'm cool with it. Sort yeah. Because previously, yeah, I'd I don't be... know. I, I I went out with people who wouldn't necessarily take it all that well, and I just thought I was kind of scarred by that, wasn't I? Yeah. How did you feel when she went blind? Upset. Blank. How did you put left? Even literally just put upset. <laughs> How I was going did for... you feel? <laughs> upset. <laughs> <laughs> On the notes, guys. He just literally talked upset. <laughs> I don't know why that's making me laugh so much. I'm going to freestyle it more. Okay. Like, he wants a genuine emotional response, don't you? Well, to help people, yeah. Okay. How did you feel? So, as the notes say, uh, upset was the, like, it was the predominant feeling. It was, it was hard because, like, what happened was Lucy, like, sort of, sort of put it to the back of her mind for, like, maybe a good year, wasn't it? So, mm -hmm. like, we sort of, like, we're just, it was being a bit stoic really like sort of just trying like we went on holiday we tried to like keep her happy for the most part and it, it was difficult like but I tried to take the practical approach at that point sort of like learning how to guide her properly um making sure that we could like sort of learn braille together 
But then like after about a year, around the time that I went off to university, uh, Lucy's depression then hit, like she sort of, it sort of clicked. And that was when it was really hard because like I wasn't near either. I was about an hour away in Leicester and she was in Birmingham. And so it made, it made it tough to like, cause usually at that point you sort of cuddle someone, you like reassure them it's all okay, but it's hard when you're apart. And yeah, it was, it was tricky. Like there was a lot of crying involved, like between both Lucy and I alone together, like separately, but we were sort of always there for each other. Like Lucy would have moments of outbursts of anger and we'd try to calm it down. But it, it's tricky because like, I, like I, I'm not experiencing what she's going through. Like I'm not blind myself. So when it comes to empathizing, like Lou was really sort of like, she had this sort of period of anger at people who were sighted because, well, we, we could see and it wasn't fair to. and yeah and I used to be able to see didn't yeah. I yeah and it made it sort of like because everything I'd say Luce would at that point just be like oh you can see and I'd be like yes but I'm trying my hardest here like I'm learning things with you I'm like we can get through this Lou I didn't see an end did I no I got yeah. quite snappy yeah it was it was it was hard but we're we're in a much better place now like, yeah. Lee's cheerful, like, as you can see in the other videos, like, she's all happy as Larry and everything. <laughs> well, I am. How were you coping with my mood swings? Oh, that was tricky. Um, uh, it'd be a combination of, like, when it was sort of, like, on the phone and things, and Liz was, like, going up and down, up and down, and up and down, it was sort of, like, just trying to remain consistent myself, like, at least show her that there is some sort of rock to hold on to. That uh, really helped me, definitely. I'm glad. Yeah. And um, when sort of alone, it was like I'd sort of just delve into sort of my own work in a way, like just go on to like Maya or Ableton or something and just sort of drown it out for a bit. Like, Guys, if you don't know what those programs are, I didn't. He's a VFX artist. He just presses... <laughs> Lots of buttons and makes yes. pretty things on the computer. That is exactly what I do. That is, <laughs> these these pieces of software, expensive as anything, that you press buttons Sorry, and they just. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it because it's so visual. It is. It is strange, like a, a, a blind girl going out with a VFX artist, and that's that's a video in itself in a way. <laughs> yeah. It is. But uh, Ableton's a music piece of music software, so at least I have that for Lou. Yeah. Definitely. Though it did take her a while to sort of get to like the type of music I wrote. <laughs> when I first met her, she was just into indie, like uh, Ben Howard, uh, Newton Faulkner, still and now she well, she's still into it, but like her, it's, it's widened. And but your film taste is still fairly. <laughs> Excuse me. How does it get really annoyed? Oh, that's another thing. <laughs> oh. So little pet peeves. That's that should be a question of its <laughs> yeah, own. Pet peeves. <laughs> so pet peeves. Lucy, before she went blind, she didn't watch anything but rom coms. <laughs> Nothing at all. She watched like Notting Hill, uh, Love Actually, <laughs> and then just like any random rom com. Which now like that's fine. Like that's like that sort of matches Lucy's personality. It's all good. Except when you're trying to describe. Who someone looks like because you're like oh he looks like chris hemsworth she's like who <laughs> no uh, like, i know who chris hemsworth is you didn't know when i've just never seen him you didn't know when we first met <laughs> you didn't know who chris evans was you didn't know any of the marvel people like oh like i don't know oh god he's bullying me he's like bullying me. shia labeouf and all sorts shia labeouf that's the only reason you know him. <laughs> so when it comes to describing, you're like, oh yeah, he looks like blah, blah, blah. he looks like blah, blah, blah. she looks like this. Lucy has no clue. She's like, so so does that mean she's brunette? I'm like, no, she's blonde. And it, it's all just, it's a pain. What other pet peeves do we have? <laughs> you like that, don't you? Hulk is trying to get the bone again. For God's sake, Hulk. Other pet peeves. I don't think you really have any because I'm just so great. Oh, um, let me think, let me think. 
Uh, this one's not to do with uh, blindness, but it did take her a while to get used to spicy food. Yeah. Like, Lou, Lou liked to play. Like to so play. It took her a, a, a while to... Because my palate, I like things spicy. I like things like sort of even throwing all you, the spices in. You blink and hiccup every single time. Oh, yeah. Though. I think I've got some sort of allergy to some sort of chilli. Because like, as soon as I have a tiny, tiny bit of hiccup everywhere. But this is completely getting off the point. Next question. How did you cope more? Tell me about how you cope more. So it it sort of felt like we were going blind together in a way. Like we, like everything was sort of us as a team. Like we'd we'd cry together. We'd talk things through. We'd just sort of be with each other quite a lot. And at the start, it made us grow closer than probably your know, average sixteen, seventeen year olds were. Because, well, it's a pretty traumatic event, by any means. Is there any time that you would have split up because of it? I don't think so. I think that, like, I always sort of knew what the Lucy, like, was behind this sort of, like, depression caused by the blindness. Because it wasn't Lou being, like, mean or anything. Like, all of this snappiness, it was because of her blindness. It wasn't because of Lou's in a person and well it's paid off now because she's cheerful and I know the true her let's go on to the next question okay. what's the hardest thing about Lucy's blindness and I don't know why I've said Lucy in third person because it's me but yeah what's the hardest thing about my blindness uh, the hardest thing was well I sort of mentioned like waking up and knowing that like I, I could never empathise with Lucy in terms of her eyesight like, I can try, but I don't experience the darkness she wakes up with every morning. The the ability to, like, bumping into things when they're out of place. Like, the just the difficulty of general life with it. Like, I see her going through it and, like, it hurts a huge amount. But, like, as she, she like, used to get angry about, like, I can't directly understand it. Other things, moving, that was... Incredibly tricky. We moved down for our careers to London, and it, it was tricky because, well, first of all, Lucy absolutely loves her family, and they're her support network, especially when I'm like not here, for example, like because I do longer hours sometimes and things like that. And as well, like Lucy knows Birmingham like the back of her hand. She's seen it. She knows all the, like the parks. She knows the, the like the schools, the pubs, everything. Whereas over here, like it's well, it's a fresh start. She knows nothing about here apart from where the eye hospital is, and that made it really tricky when we first moved down here because it was sort of like a, a mini low in a way. Because well, it was, it was tricky. Like imagine going to somewhere having to learn it, but unable to see it. It's like literally knowing nothing about the place. And it doesn't help that London, like, there's a lot in the news about it being dangerous occasionally. There's, well, police sirens, as you may be able to hear. And, like, where Lou comes from, it's a bit quieter. Sometimes it can make her feel on edge. In addition, holidays. That That's another tricky thing. We're trying to get there. Like, we, we've been to Devon a few times. Um, just sort of getting her used to, like... Because holidays are fast. Like, you don't have the time to learn everything like you go to there and like when we moved here we like we've been here for a few months now we've learned it now but with a holiday you have like a week maybe two weeks at most most of the time to learn somewhere so you have to learn it incredibly quickly lucy becomes more reliant on like myself on olg even olg's not particularly great there because with guide dogs you have very set routes that they're particularly great on like the she's still good like other places like she knows curves she knows this but like her speciality comes to when she knows routes and that's sort of gone out the window. So it's like a whole new thing, like different foods, different places, like different environments and different noises. Like like when something, like we know all the noises, like where we live, like, you know, there's going to be a police siren, blah, 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 blah. But when there's like rustlings in, rustling in the trees, like in the middle of Devon, you don't know if that's a person. And it can make Lou a bit panicky. With holidays now, like, we think of them in a, a slightly different way. We've researched them in advance we know exactly sort of what type of holiday we want to go to because like we always have this thing where there's now like a line in the sand like Lou says it I think she said it a few times on this channel there there's sighted Lucy and then there's blind Lucy and they're two different entities like 
well, then they're the same person, but like two different sides of life. Like the things that she wanted to do, like when she was sighted, she's now sort of changed them. Like there's different priorities with being a blind person, and she's. And it doesn't necessarily make them, you know, worse priorities. But I think if I didn't accept that, then I wasn't going to be happy, was I? Huh? No, you were sort of. We needed to accept that. Like maybe, like well, luckily you. I don't think you ever expressed like a an interest in like going crazy mountaineering or <laughs> extreme sports but I'd be able to wear my heels. Yeah, like <laughs> heels I'm up a mountainside, blocker. that's that's not a thing. Lou, Lou likes her makeup, she likes looking pretty, she likes her hair dryers and everything. I she, wouldn't be able to plug them into the ground if we go camping. Yeah, Lou's not a fan of camping. And that's that's something <laughs> that we sounds so extra. <laughs> well like you, you've if taken like, like different here. priorities in life I think also when we were discussing holidays before I was always like oh what if I could go camping and Ollie would be like Lou you never wanted to do camping when I met you babe like <laughs> you know why are you thinking about it now just because you can't see and I was like oh yeah so it's, that's made me feel differently yeah. isn't it all what are the most positive parts about blindness most positive part about blindness <laughs> by far is this little creature on my feet currently <laughs> Olga? Yeah, definitely. I totally agree. And also, it's made me who I am, I guess. Yeah. Tent in our life, aren't we? Yeah. What we've been dealt with. I think it's brought up a, like, a few opportunities, like, for example, this. Like, yeah. This has brought us loads. Like, we wouldn't have had, well, we wouldn't have met Zoella, we wouldn't have gone up this morning, you wouldn't have interviewed Charlie Cox. There's yeah. quite a lot. You editing the videos as well has definitely brought us closer because I'm like, oh my god, I don't like that bit about me and you're like, Lucy, it's fine and yeah. you edit it. Like, and... like, yeah, it's great. Like, let's... Like, you're like, oh, I don't like that way I put that on them. So I'm like, pretty around it. Yeah. And, so, <laughs> and we end up with a happy result. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Gonna have fun while editing. Oh, that, that was hard. Oh. That was not fun. Oh, Ouch. Is it any different dating a blind girl to a sighted girl? Uh, don't you have to be a blind man in order to date a blind woman, Oliver? Well, first question. Well, second question. No. <laughs> you don't have to be blind. Evidenced by moi. And well, well down there. It's, a, no. it's such a misconception, isn't it? Yeah, like, some people do it. Like, we do know people who are blind and blind. But Which is cool. Yeah, that's, that's cool. But, but there's also, nice. like, it's people are people. Like, you, you get along... Like, blindness isn't just your personality. It's, like, how... I don't know. I like tomatoes. I'm not going to fall in love with everyone who likes tomatoes. I hate tomatoes. Exactly. <laughs> but... Tomato, tomato. In terms of the first question, however, it's not that different. It's mainly to do with old Lou herself is... Well, there's not really any differences. But when it comes to old, we have to think of... Uh, where we're going in advance, like sort of like which tube stations are accessible, um, if we're going to have any issues in shops, we should know our rights, like there's so many times that we've gone up to the managers and been like, yep, she's allowed in. Guide dogs give you this like little card that states Olga's rights on, which is, well, it's safe as how many situations, Lou? Loads. Loads right. and loads. It's a, but also, I get a bit startled, don't I? So usually, yeah. All the so you, you sort of freeze pressure. because it's like the whole discrimination thing. You're like mistaking away your rights. So we deal with it there and then. If they're still being dodgy, then well, they're not going to get out of business. Like, yeah, screw you. We're not going to buy your clothes or your burgers or anything like that. And then you go, Ollie. You go. So another thing is, uh, we get quite a few people either staring at us or occasionally screaming the, the screaming ones become quite funny now hasn't it Lou yeah so, screaming runners we call them yeah they're just like it's usually we're just like walking along walking along there'll be a bunch of people in front of us and all good just be like because Olga has no patience in crowds <laughs> she will be like yep yeah, I'm coming through and she will like weave in between she's like a, a Londoner in a rush <laughs> or like any like crazy you know when you see in movies and there's always that guy who walks in front of the taxi and he's like hey I'm walking here that's Olga, in dog form. Is that your New York accent? No, that was not a New York accent. I deliberately <laughs> didn't do one because I know I'm bad at them. <laughs> so, another thing, when I first met Luce, I was not particularly a dog person. Uh, when she licked you, you'd cower. Well, we, you, we'd slightly broken me on dogs because um, of Bella, Lucy's pet dog, who 
is Absolutely. anything. That, yes. like, she's she's nuts, but she's really entertaining and she's she's great. She's got a lovely head, but a pig body. Yeah. I say that with love. <laughs> she she is quite cute if you look at her from the front. <laughs> Sorry, mom. <laughs> but um. Yeah, so I, I wasn't a big fan of dogs, so it, it took a while to get used to her. I was never scared of her, but it was like, ooh, no, no, don't don't lick me, don't, like... And then, like, I, I tried to stroke and she tried to lick my arm. And, and now you don't mind her licking you. Yeah, so now, I, now I'm pretty good. I don't, I don't mind her licking me. Oh, yeah, one thing just remembered that is slightly different is audio description. Now... It's like I've known some people like there's some comments on like online like when I was trying to fix it one time because it went off they really hate audio description they're like why is this on blah, 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 blah. but it's not that bad like well it's great like I I love it because it means that Lou can just watch it with me and I like we can just snuggle up and I don't have to watch the TV and describe it all times because like before Netflix like properly got their audio description in like maybe about three years ago was it mm-hmm. like it was like I'd literally be describing everything like we have done some like interesting ones like when we did um we watched uh, Downfall which is entirely in German I described every oh, yeah. single bit of it and yes, yeah. it was and all I... great until Lucy fell asleep <laughs> I was describing to a, a sleeping woman I was like Lou it's not fun. So audio description, lifesaver. I love and it. And Man in the High Castle. Man in the High Castle was great, but that was audio described, wasn't no, it? No, it wasn't. Not was at it all. not audio described? described? That whole series to me, both seasons. To be fair, we also did that with Dexter. Yeah, Amazon. Come on, guys. Dexter was on Netflix. Was it? Yeah. Anyway, be like Netflix original series because they're absolutely amazing. They're fantastic. Um, but you have what AD on? Yeah, I I have. Uh, audio description on just on my own now like I don't ever turn it off because well, like just in case Lucy ever wanders into the room and I'm just watching a film I want her to be able to just join in if I just give her a quick summary just like anyone else would oh yeah that's another thing um, what Lou just mentioned describing audio describing in real life like with like general life Lou's always wondering like because like most people just wonder what people look like you just wonder like are they dark haired are they blonde are they tall are they thin are they like, short, are they uh, fashionable? Like, do they wear stripy tops? All that stuff. And I'm <laughs> describing them, and it's become quite a thing, like, especially with people you get quite close to, we describe them properly, like, they go under, like, a full, like... It... No, it's because they say, what do you think I Yeah, they like? go, like, and they, they ask for it, to be fair. They go, what do you think I look like? And then you just describe them from their voice, and then... We give you a full description, like nose size, like eyebrow shape. It's become such a habit now that I've started describing people, like things, like I've been audio describing the TV when I, I haven't been with Luce. I've been like sitting with like my family and then i be like, so Tom walks into the bar, he's wearing a pink colored top and blue jeans. And they're like, Ollie, you know Lucy's not here, right? Like, oh yeah. You're so sweet. Next question. That's it. Is it? So, that's it for the video, guys. If you have any more questions, just leave them down below in the comments. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell. Like, make sure to do that because you won't get the notice. Otherwise, the usual stuff. He might do a part two. Yeah, there might to. be a part two if you guys enjoyed this enough. Hopefully, I haven't babbled on too much. And I will, well, Lucy. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.